and some of these uh, religious ideals include like how different Christian denominations treat the sacraments, uh, specifically communion uh, being a symbol or the true presence, um, confession uh, through a sacrament or directly to God, and these types of things uh, that kind of lack full communion. Uh, on the other hand, though, uh, these separated churches and communities as such, though we believe they suffer from defects, have by no means been deprived of significance and importance in the mystery of salvation. All right, uh, that comes from Unitatis Redenta Gratio. All right, paragraph three. I'm using a lot of other encyclicals here to kind of uh, state my point where this declaration is going and where it's coming from. Um, so remember, just because they don't necessarily agree with the Catholic Church on sacraments, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean they don't have access or means to salvation, all right? Not everything's been completely cut off. All right, um, the Church, Kingdom of God, and Kingdom of Christ, uh, paragraphs 18 through 19, once again, uh, remembering that there's a unification here of Christ and the Church. The mission of the Church is to proclaim and establish among all peoples the Kingdom of Christ and of God, and she is on earth the seed and the beginning of that Kingdom, she being the Church, Lumen Gentium, uh, paragraph 5. She is called to announce and to establish the Kingdom. On the other hand, the Church is the people gathered by the unity of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, also from Lumen Gentium, paragraph 4. She is therefore the Kingdom of Christ already present in mystery. Uh, Lumen Densium, paragraph 3, and constitutes its seed and beginning. All right. So it is a mystery on how the church um, is the kingdom of Christ. Um, we don't necessarily fully comprehend or understand. Remember, it transcends our understanding, right? Um, some of these mysteries are of divine nature and human nature, right? We don't necessarily understand them. We grapple with them. We pray about them. We uh, meditate over them uh, in a very human way but uh, they remain a mystery in a lot of ways. The intimate connection between Christ, the kingdom, and the church cannot be denied or emptied in any way. In fact, the kingdom of God, um, which we know from Revelation, cannot be detached either from church or from Christ. And that's from uh, John Paul, uh, a little earlier in his uh, papacy, uh, Redemptoris Missio, in paragraph 18. Right, So... The church and Christ cannot be separated. Christ founded the church um, and continues to exist within the church. And concerning the relationship between the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ, and the church, it is necessary to avoid one-sided emphasis, as is the case of those who, in speaking about the kingdom of God, are silent about Christ, or put great stress on the mystery of creation, but remain silent about the mystery of redemption, because they say Christ cannot be understood by those who lack Christian faith, whereas different peoples, cultures, and religions are capable of finding common ground in the one divine reality by whatever name it is called. So once again, this uh, declaration by John Paul II uh, returns to this understanding that just because someone might not be Christian, when they come across the mysteries of salvation um, in, in light of Christ, there is value there, right? There is truth there. Um, and... If not, if it wasn't there, then you return up to the call or the mission of the church. It becomes somewhat irrelevant to have a mission if it is not um, obtainable, right? Um, all right, so we're getting close to the end here um, on this declaration. And remember, this is just kind of a summary of these things. Um, you're going to see a lot more from the words themselves, uh, which you'll grapple with. But this is a great supplement. Uh, this is a great... Um, commentary uh, to follow up with as you're reading through. Uh, so you're going to want to go back to these videos for sure. The church and the other religions in revelation to uh, in relation to salvation. So these other faiths come into play here in paragraphs 20, 21, and 22. From what has been stated above, some points follow that are necessary for theological reflection as it explores the relationship of the church and of the other religions in salvation. Above all, it must be firmly believed that the church of Pilgrim Nile on earth is necessary for salvation. The one Christ is the mediator in the way of salvation. He is present to us in his body, with which is the church, Lumen Gentium 14. Returning to the universality and the unity of Christ being the way to salvation. This doctrine must not be uh, set against the universal salvific will of God. Rather, it is necessary to keep uh, those two truths together, namely the real possibility of salvation in Christ for all mankind and the necessity of the church for this salvation. Uh, once again, John Paul II, 
redemptoris in the seal, uh, paragraph 9. So again, we return to this understanding that Christ is uh, the mediator and the necessitator of salvation. For those who are not formally members of the church, salvation in Christ is accessible by virtue of a grace which, while having a mysterious relationship to the church, does not make them formally part of the church, but enlightens them in a way that is accommodated to their spiritual and material um, situation. So remember that not everyone has been exposed to the truth of Jesus Christ. So it is um, indeterminable uh, and also um, somewhat inerrant to think that Christ is not accessible to those who don't know him, right? Uh, this grace comes from Christ and it is the result of his salvation and his communication by the Holy Spirit. So uh, Christ's grace has no bounds. Right, it can reach anybody at any place. Uh, that again comes from the Tories Um With regard to the way in which the salvific grace of God comes uh, to the individual non Christians, the Second Vatican Council limited itself to the statement that God bestows it in ways known to Himself. Uh, Gentes, paragraph seven. Um, so when we're talking about salvation for those who are not Christian, um, that builds on the mystery. We don't know. We can't know the mercy and will of God. We just know that it exists. Uh, theology is currently seeking to understand this question more deeply. Absolutely. Because it is a question. It is a mystery. And we continually, through the study of God, uh, hope uh, and aspire to know. At the same time, however, it is clear that it would be contrary to the Catholic faith to consider the church as a way of salvation alongside those constituted by other religions. So once again, returning to that unity, returning to that uh, universality of the Catholic faith as the true faith, right? So exploring and revealing, but yet not uh, seceding in a way. All right, uh, then paragraph 23 is basically a conclusion in the declaration, and it has four basic points. All right, so the intention of the present declaration is to reiterate and clarify certain truths of the faith in the face of problematic and even erroneous uh, positions or propositions. Okay, so once again, it's uh, declarations are kind of a response to certain things. Uh, the question, uh, in treating the question of the true religion, the fathers of the Second Vatican Council thought, we believe that this one true religion continues to exist in the Catholic and Apostolic Church to which the Lord Jesus entrusted the task of spreading it among all people, right? Um, so the Great Commission at the end of all four Gospels. Thus he said to the apostles, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Uh, Matthew 28, 19 through 20, the Great Commission. Especially in these things that concern God and his church, all persons are required to seek the truth and then, and when they come to know it, to embrace it and hold fast to it. Vatican Council, Nominatis Humanae, uh, paragraph one. So, all those who seek to find the truth have access to it through Christ um, and are called to embrace that truth, uh, not to shy away from it. And that takes time. That's different for everybody, right? Uh, when we come to a truth about our lives, when we reveal a certain mystery of our faith life that wasn't there before, maybe we have a deeper understanding of Christ's presence in the Eucharist. Um, and it's something that isn't necessarily understood right away. That takes a lifetime of um, prayer and spiritual renewal and uh, um, struggle. Uh, we, we don't have all the answers, right? Okay, uh, really quickly, just a reference to uh, my references. I used a summary from catholicculture.org uh, and the encyclical itself um, and images from uh, Google image search, Dominus Jesus were the pictures, okay? So just a note there. Um, now, let's go ahead and turn to the schedule for this week. Um, big reminder, tomorrow, your final draft of your report on uh, uh, Domina Cum et Vivicantum uh, is due. Okay, huge part of your grade. Uh, make sure you get that in. You've had uh, about 10 days to, to get to that point. So uh, if you're running behind, just make sure you get that final draft, and that's definitely worth more points. Um, so after this video, I expect you to get back to that. <laughs> All right. Because tomorrow, alongside your report being due, we're starting on Dominus Jesus. All right. So you're going to do the introduction paragraphs one through four for me, and then we move into the next sections. 
I will do a review video uh, of the first 12 chapters on Friday and post that so you don't have an assignment on Friday, uh, but you do have two assignments tomorrow and uh, one on Wednesday and Thursday, okay? Uh, then we complete next week, uh, we complete the Dominus Jesus uh, uh, declaration, and then I will review the remaining paragraphs in those, uh, kind of flesh out the main ideas that you're going to want to know for when I put out the study guide, not this Friday, but next Friday on the two encyclicals. Um, so you already have half the uh, study guide from uh, the document on uh, Dominum uh, Vivicatum, okay? Uh, and then you'll have a study week. Announcement of the final will come out on Friday, May 22nd. Um, and then you acknowledge that you understand that the final is on Tuesday when Monday, uh, May 25th comes around. So just like the midterm, you kind of sign in, you know. Uh, you acknowledge that you know when it is and where it is and what the expectations are. Um, so you'll have the study guide for about 11 days before the uh, actual final comes, all right? So uh, make sure you take that final week, that study week, seriously. Okay, um, I expect you guys to do very well on this. Uh, there's not too much material to know. Uh, you have the 24 paragraphs from the first encyclical and then 23. So 20, uh, 47 points, which means we're probably going to have 47 questions, right, um, to uh, be prepared for for the final. All right, uh, and it will be a time final through the Google Classroom again. All right, uh, that's enough from me. Uh, thanks for hanging with me. I know this was a long one, um, but please revisit it when you're doing the uh, assignments on Dominus Jesus. It will help you out, all right? Uh, so as always, make sure you stay well and uh, stay safe, and God bless.